In this example problem, uh, we have a factored load and moment combination uh, applied to the beam are found to be PU equals four, P sub U equals 400 kips compression and our M sub U is 2000 kip inches. And uh, we wanna know if this column um, is adequately designed. So we have our cross section, it's uh, 12 by 20 uh, 4KSI with three number nine bars on the top and the bottom, uh, grade 60 steel, so our FY is equal to 60 KSI. And uh, we have our column is 20 feet long uh, with a ratio of uh, bottom to top eccentricity equal to 0.5, uh, which tells us uh, about the ratio of the, the bottom to top uh, moment as well. Uh, we have a, a pinned, pinned column, so our K is equal to uh, 1.0. The first thing that we need to do is we need to find our MN diagram for the section, not including slenderness effects. Um, so just finding our, our short column uh, uh, moment axial force interaction diagram. Um, so we did this in a previous example. So we're assuming that this is uh, uh, given to us, um, where we have the blue is the unfactored diagram and the, the orange here is the uh, factored diagram. The first thing that we need to do is we need to determine if our column is slender. Uh, so we can do that using the uh, our ACI limits and our KL over our um, slenderness ratio. Uh, so we can start by solving uh, for our limits. Um, so we know our limit is 34 plus 12 uh, times the ratio of M1 to M2, uh, which is the same as our ratio of our top to our bottom to top eccentricity. Um, our M1 is the lesser factor end moment, so we know that this ratio is, is less than 1. Um, so we know our ratio of 0.5 is okay. Um, and it's bent in single curvature, so we're going to be uh, negative. Um, so we have negative 0.5. Um, so this will give us a, a limit here of 28. And uh, this 28 is less than our 40, so our um, lower value here controls, so our 28 controls. Now we need to check our KL over R ratio for our actual column uh, to see if we're less than this um, limit. If we're less than the limit, then we can neglect slenderness. If we're above the limit, then we uh, need to take into account slenderness. All right, so our K is 1 um, for a simply supported column. Our L is 20 feet uh, and we're going to take it times 12 inches per foot and then divide by our R for a rectangular section is just 0.3 uh, times our H uh, which is 20 inches. Uh, so we'll get our KL over R here to be equal to 40. Um, we see our, our 40 is greater than 28, so we are slender. Um, so we need to uh, continue with our moment magnifier procedure. Uh, next, we need to uh, calculate our EI for our section. Um, our EI, we're going to use the detailed expression from ACI. Uh, which includes both a, a concrete and a steel component for our stiffness. Uh, so our, our concrete component is just going to be uh, EC, so uh, 57,000 times the square root of 4,000 PSI divided by 1,000 pounds per kip. Um, I'm just going to put the 5 over here. And then um, times uh, our B times our H to the third divided by 12. And this will give us a, a value here of 5.77 times uh, 10 to the 6th kip inches squared. Our ES 
IS component then is just uh, 29,000. Uh, times um, our IS is just the AD squared component uh, from our parallel axis theorem. Um, so for us, we have two layers of three uh, number nine bars. So there's our A component, and then we need our D squared component. So these bars are uh, 10 inches minus 2.5 inches um, away from the uh, centroid of our section and then squared. Uh, so this will give us an ESIS component equal to 9.79 uh, times 10 uh, to the 6 kip uh, inches squared. Uh, we can then plug this into our EI expression. Uh, so we'll get 5.77 times 10 to the 6 plus 9.79 times 10 to the 6 divided by 1 plus 1. Uh, we're assuming that uh, all of the load here is sustained. Um, so assuming that all the load is sustained. Then we'll get our EI to be equal to 7.8 Uh, times 10 to the 6th kip inches squared. Uh, and note that this uh, the beta DNS factor takes into account our long-term effects. Um, so those are included in our uh, calculation of EI. We can next uh, determine our effective length, KL, um, and we'll use um, an alignment chart uh, if we and our known end conditions if we have different end conditions than um, than pin pin which is our base case um, for us we have a, a, a pin pin end condition uh, so we know our k is equal to one um, so our kl is just one uh, times 20 feet times 12 inches per foot Uh, which will give us 240 um, inches. We can then plug all this in and calculate our, our P critical. And our P critical is just going to be our pi squared times our EI, which we found on the previous slide, 7.8 times 10 to the sixth. Divided by 240 squared uh, will give us a P critical of 1,340 kips. Uh, we can also find our CM factor. Uh, so our CM is going to be equal to um, 0 0.6 minus 0 0.4 times uh, m1 over m2. Um, again, this is the same ratio that we used uh, uh, before. So it's the ratio of our, our bottom to top eccentricity. It's going to be negative because we're bent in single curvature. So we'll have a negative 0.5 here uh, to give us a CM equal to 0.8. So then we need to choose an axial load. We'll choose uh, the axial load that's given for our, our load combination. So PU equal to P sub U equal to 400 kips. And then we can calculate our um, moment magnifier for this given axial load. Uh, so we know our, our moment magnifier then is going to be equal to 0.8 divided by 1 minus uh, 400 divided by 0.75 um, times 1,340 kips. 
uh, and this will give us a moment magnifier of 1.33. Uh, so note that here we're using um, ACI and we're using a, our factored expressions. Um, so we're including um, a 0.75 stiffness reduction factor. And uh, this factor is just based on the probability of, our, of the understrength of a single isolated slender column. Um, so anyway, that, that gives us our, our moment magnifier, uh, which we'll use to uh, magnify, magnify um, our applied moment on the next slide. Our final step here is to uh, compute the maximum magnified moment. Uh, so for us, this is going to be equal to our moment magnifier, which we found on the previous slide, 1.33, uh, times our M2, which is just M sub U here, uh, which is 2,000 uh, kip inches. Um, so for us, 1.33 times 2,000 is uh, 2,660 kip inches. So this in combination with our axial load of 400 gives us our load combination. Um, then we can compare this um, load combination point uh, on, with our short column capacity and uh, see if we check. So here you can see on our um, moment axial force interaction diagram, without slenderness, we have sufficient capacity. So our column's, column is okay. Um, when we include slenderness, we're magnifying our moment. And you can see with our slenderness effects, our column is no longer um, sufficient. So we are no good. Um, so the column doesn't have sufficient capacity when we include slenderness effects. Uh, so this means that we either need to add bracing, um, to, uh, intermediate bracing to decrease our effective length uh, to make sure that slenderness isn't a factor, or we need to uh, modify the design of our section. Um, but uh, either way, we need to change the design for this column. So uh, that concludes uh, this example problem.